I'd like to say good morning to everyone in the U.S. and anybody listening from abroad. Uh, welcome to Compass Coffee Talk. Uh, this is our 11th episode. Um, we're very honored to feature Blair Kellison, the CEO of Traditional Medicinals, uh, one of the foremost brands in wellness teas, wellness products, um, a leader in natural, organic, and fair trade. And um, we're very honored to have everybody join us today. So um, I like to see the participants coming in the door. Welcome, everybody. If you've got questions or you want to chat, uh, I think you know what to do. This is a live Zoom show. It will be recorded um, for posterity, and we post these on YouTube. You go to YouTube and search for Compass Coffee Talk. You'll see all our episodes posted there. Um, I want to uh, welcome and uh, thank our sponsor, Allegro Coffee, although we're going to spend the next half hour talking about tea. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure they don't mind. Uh, I want to acknowledge my co-host, uh, Bill Capsalis, who is a natural products industry veteran and newly appointed as the executive director of Naturally Boulder, uh, one of the founding organizations of the Naturally Network now um, in some major cities nationwide. So, Bill, congratulations, because this is new news. So, oh, thank you very really, much. I appreciate that, you. Steve. And, yeah. and uh, welcome, everyone. And yeah, uh, Blair has definitely a connection to the Naturally Network, uh, having founded an organization in the North Bay. And we're going to talk a little bit about some really cool stuff he's got going on with that. So, you know, if uh, if you're ready, Steve, maybe we just launch into a couple questions. What do you think? Yeah, and let me make um, some intros here because sure. I, you know, I've known the founder of Traditional Medicinals, Drake Sadler. As a matter of fact, he's been a close friend and a mentor for many years. I've taken some um, amazing journeys with him as well and uh, had learned a lot over the years. I've visited Traditional Medicinals, uh, spent time with their leadership team. Uh, before Blair joined, and I've known Blair independently in his role as a leader in wellness in the industry um, with some previous incarnations where um, this is not the first time around he's been the first um, kind of non-founder CEO of a company. So we've interacted for quite some time now over the years too, Blair, and I really um, love to see his role and bringing his professionalism to a legacy brand uh, traditional medicinals um, founded, I think, in the mid seventies. Um, you seventy four. Holy no. mackerel! That's when I graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, the very first natural products I got I got turned on to was in high school by my girlfriend then, and it was Red Zinger tea, you know, from Celestial <laughs> Seasonings, and and of course, here's the two brands that really created the wellness tea category. So, uh, again, really honored to have you. And yeah, I just want to kind of start off by saying, Blair, you know, how are you and the traditional medicinals team holding up in all this? Because you've had your own experience uh, going through this past year. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks. First, I just want to say a, a big shout out to any of my friends in the industry who are listening today. Thanks for tuning in. And always got to give my biggest shout out to Drake Sadler and the, the traditional medicinals, medicinals board. Without them, there's no uh, Blair Kellison on uh, the coffee talk today. So I'm, I'm a super appreciative of the opportunity they gave me in this industry. And boy, Steven and Bill, these are a couple of great guys in a world of uh, phonies and fake news. These two guys are the real deal and they've done wonders for our industry. And I'm proud to be in the industry with them. But so listen, thanks for thanks for the opening question. So, you know, we're doing the best possible, probably doing the very best possible under the circumstances. And, and I appreciate you asking, um, you know, hey, our production workers are classified as essential workers by the Department of Health, but, you know, we classify them as heroic and amazing and, and uh, fully responsible for keeping that tea on the shelves over the last year. They've just done an incredible job. Um, we've only lost two production days in the last year of COVID, which is really quite remarkable for all the yeah. social distancing and the, the, the protocols we put in place. And, uh, and Drake's been a huge help. So uh, about five years ago, we separated our office away from our factory. And so uh, they don't see me as often and, and they don't see Drake as often anymore. And uh, Drake and I have been both coming to the factory every day and it's been fun for them to see us every day and fun for them to see us together. And it's kind of been a little bit of the old days and Drake's just been tremendously supportive all during COVID and, and just having his presence there has been, been great. And I can't thank him enough for that. And, 
But gosh, I'll tell you a little personal story. How am I doing? Listen, when COVID started, um, I kind of hit the wall in August of last year. We sort of had this, this sort of triple thing of uh, COVID would have been going on for about six months. Uh, the Black Lives Matter was exploding all across the country and Sonoma County was burning with wildfires. And about two thirds of our employees, after all of this sh shit with COVID, two thirds of our employees are in an evacuation zone, many being evacuated. It was crazy. And, and uh, when COVID started, uh, Xavier Yankovic, uh, Unkovic, who's the CEO of Amy's and I started doing a Wednesday lunch webinar with the 42 companies in the Naturally North Bay, just kind of trying to like share best practices from finding uh, things and getting through this. And, and uh, listen, we had a call one day in the middle of all of these, these triple things going on. And man, I just kind of bared my soul and just told the group like, you know, for the first time in my life, I think my leadership tank is about empty. I can see the bottom. And I think my empathy tank is about empty too, because I got 240 employees are looking to Blair to like get us through this and, and, and feel our pain and be there for with us. And God, I started, I broke down and I started crying. I was like, shit, I need somebody to lead me. I need some empathy myself. And it really just galvanized that group of the 42 of us because everybody else was feeling the same way. It's really hard to be a leader in really tough times. And from that day forward, the 42 of us CEOs in the North Bay, we just, we went through this whole thing together and it bonded us in a way that, that could have never happened. And God, what a beautiful industry we work in with a bunch of beautiful people. So it was, it was, it was quite an experience. Wow. Well, I, yes, it is more than an industry. It is a community. And I'm really glad you've had that support because also um, as a manufacturer, there, there have been no breaks for you. As a matter of fact, I'll bet the demand for your products has um, increased, yes, yes. I don't know how many fold. You know, Some months so. it was up 100%. Wow. Yeah, last, awesome. last April up 100%, May it was 90%. It was crazy. In the middle of it all, we needed to make more tea than ever, bring more stuff in than ever. I mean, it was, there was a bunch of people at the company that were working harder than ever during the most difficult time ever. Before we tell more of the traditional story, you know, uh, you know, we talked about Bill being the new director for Naturally Boulder. I know that you've been really foundational as well with uh, Naturally North Bay um, and also Naturally Bay Area out there. You're on the board and um, tell us about what you just helped organize with the team there at Naturally yeah. North Bay, because I just think that's exemplary. Great and very so if I uh, bared my arm, I got my vaccine, I got my, fir my first shot yesterday. But our uh, through literally like two or three hundred phone calls, working with the county, working with uh, the Department of Health, and working with the other companies, and coordinate our food group organized uh, a parking lot vaccination yesterday and today. So we're vaccinating. We're going to try to vaccinate a thousand people in the food industry in the North Bay uh, yesterday and today. So I'm going out there right after this, and I'm volunteering. To, yesterday I got my shot. Today I'm volunteering. And uh, we all chipped in food. So you get Alvarado Street bread, you get Amy's stuff, you get traditional medicinal tea, you get all kinds of goodies to do it too. So, but it's just the, the it's the beauty of these food groups. You know, we, we said a long time ago, collaboration trumps competition any day. We should all know each other. We can all learn from it. You know, Amy's and I and TM are a couple of the biggest companies in the county, but we got other ones like La Tortilla Factory and Alvarado Street Bakery and, and Strauss that are all great companies and everybody's doing something better than every, than everybody else on some level. And now we share all that stuff and it's just, it's really wonderful. And, and uh, we were all together at Expo, I think it was, uh, well, I guess two years ago, the last Expo, we had a big party at our booth and there was hundreds of people there and some guy walked by and he was like, gosh, I wish my community got together like this. And well, that's kind of what really spawned this whole natural network. And now there's something like what, Bill's seven affiliates and uh, it's fantastic. Frankly, the roots of this are in uh, your uh, region um, with this whole food group there. It used to be called Superior of California. Absolutely, yep. It was still around. First got in the that, food you know, yep. that takes me back a ways, <laughs> you know, but that war was the formative community of food manufacturers in Northern California that chose to help each other and collaborate and be supportive. So right, again, right. I think those were the roots of a pretty unique industry that's very supportive. Um, Bill, let me uh, have it to you to take Blair through some of our questions that we have prepared yeah. for you for today. <laughs> Can you um, just give us like maybe the five minute history of the world as you see it and when did you join traditional and all that i know it's been around 
for a while, but uh, how long have you been there? Sure. Uh, so I've been there 13 years, and I, I think my bio you guys sent out, which was very nice, kind of tells a little bit of my story. But I think what I'd kind of add to that is, is um, you know, I kind of got into the natural foods industry because I was a vegetarian, and I thought I wanted to promote vegetarian food. And then I kind of fell in love with organic food. And then I thought that was great to promote that. And then I was like, hey, this fair trade thing's pretty cool, and I wanted to promote that. And I uh, just kept moving. But what really attracted me to TM is that Drake Sadler, 1974, put all this into like a social business model way before anybody was doing it. And it was baked into the kind of the way traditional medicinals um, did that. And the idea that I could be the CEO of that kind of company was something way beyond anything I ever expected in my career. And hey, I'm, I'm more of a steward than I am a CEO. I'm a steward of Drake and Rosemary Gladstar, our founder's vision than I am any a CEO. And my gosh, our business model at its core is addressing two of the biggest issues of our time, climate change and income and, and racial inequality. And uh, to do that every day and, is, and we're trying to be a really sustainable company. And here, here's what we look at sustainability with six elements. The things you hear about a lot are environmental and social, but financial is an important one too, right? You got to make money. You got to be able to pay the bills. And then yeah. also cultural, your culture has to go through time. And then leadership, you have to be able, someday I'm not going to be the CEO. Drake wasn't the CEO. He transitioned it to me. I'm going to transition it to somebody else. And then ownership uh, sustainability. We, we want to remain an independent company for the next hundred years. So we have to have a plan so that the investors can get out and new investors can come in. And, and that's super cool to, to be the CEO of that. And it, Drake always calls our company a 46 year social experiment. <laughs> we, don't, we, we don't have it all right, but, but those things I just said are, are our North star. And every day we get another step closer to that North star. And just to put a little bit in perspective, we have, we have 280 farmers in 42 countries on six continents to grow herbs for us. And that's crazy. We know almost every single one of them by name and we love them and they know us by name and they love us. And, and we're investing literally a couple million dollars every single year in those communities. Those people that grow for us, a thousand of their kids go to schools that we own and operate. Some of them go to our dental clinics. Wow. Some of them live in houses we've refurbished for them. And, and uh, some of them check out books from libraries that we built for them. And, I get to be the CEO of that <laughs> and I get paid to do it. It's well, giving me chills on my board that last part, but, but yeah. <laughs> think but, about I mean, how what, many, what? think about how many people out yeah. there whose products you, you've, you've helped with your products. Absolutely. Well, and, and you know, literally we get a call a, a month, if not more, but somebody wants to buy our company and our standard response is like, I, I, we, we tell that story I just said, and I was like, we can't, we can't trust you to take care of those people. They're counting on us. They've counted on us for five decades. We need to be there for them. We got to do this on our own. Really? How has this uh, pandemic affected that, um, you know, very local in the way you interact and build your relationships, but diverse supply chain around the globe? The, the part that's the single hardest part of it is we can't go visit them. We can't get on a plane and go visit them. That's the hardest part. In a good way, it's an agricultural product. So they're out in the fields and they're outdoors. And so that part's kind of gone on. Probably the biggest uh, challenge has been the demand for herbs and wellness products and raw materials worldwide has just skyrocketed. So we send a lot of things to processors that cut and dry and steam treat them. Th those places are backed up for months. As you all know, containers are backed up. For, we have about four containers on the water any given day coming to the U.S. from Europe. And those are delayed by weeks and weeks. So it's, it's been more of the, that kind of stuff than people not being able to get out in the fields and do their work. Have you found other ways to interact? I mean, again, we're all digital. So I imagine that's very helpful for your international contacts. It, it is, of course, but there's just something about, and I'm not the people that do it, but we have a, we have medical plant agronomists that, you know, they, they want to, they want to walk the field. That's, that's where they're comfortable. And, they're right. Going nuts. They can't wait to get out back out there. So yeah. they want to be outstanding in their field. Nice. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the <laughs> we have, like our schools we own and operate, are going fine, and and things like that are are, are working fine. Great. So. Uh, Blair, can we talk a little bit about your products? I mean, they're they're so unique on some level, but they're so much a part of our uh, lexicon now. You know, functional and and helpful ingredients and immune building and all kinds of things. Um, 
Did you do any new stuff this year or what, what's your sort of product? Yeah, you know, a couple of things I'm super, so, so yeah, so you, you mentioned Celestial Debating and they really created the herbal tea market in the US. And, and what we did is we, we created the uh, herbal wellness, herbal medicinal tea category. And, and they kind of all blending together a little bit, but you know, we made, our, our teas are dietary supplements. You look on the back of most teas and it's gonna say nutrition facts, just like a box of uh, Kashi cereal. But if you look on the back of ours, uh, it, it, you know, it's gonna say supplement facts, just like on the back of a, a vitamins or something. So we took it to a whole nother level. We have medicinal grade herbs. They've been all checked for that. They have the active ingredient in them. So, so that's been kind of a, um, and it's just exploded the category. I mean, we, we've just had an amazing uh, last decade of growth and relatively flat category, but it just shows that this is what consumers want. But Bill, I'm super happy that um, we, launched, um, we launched a couple of new teas, which we do every year, which is great. And we launched our first hemp teas, which has been wow. great all during COVID. And we're really excited. We launched a line of throat coat lozenges outside of the tea category in the lozenge category. We got, we got all that out the door during COVID. So what a, what a great team to be able to do that. Wow. Dude. You mentioned you launched some hemp tea. Is that what I heard? Yeah, hemp, they're called hemp and herb. They're three teas. And, uh, and so they're, they're showing up in natural food stores right now. So Well, I'll put on my editor of the Let's Talk Hemp newsletter hat. Send <laughs> me a press release on that and we'll put it in our newsletter. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. Sounds great. Yep. Yeah. And, and <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm happy we've been able to, you know, and, and we're lucky, you know, Bill, because um, if you're the 12th tea company, you probably didn't even get an appointment during COVID. But if right. you're in the top few, that's who they paid attention to. So we got lucky that we're, that we're in a leadership position and, you know, the, the larger companies in all categories are the ones that really got attention and got to launch products. And, and uh, so we're fortunate for that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, new product introduction during the pandemic has been really challenging for brands, but I know that they've been able to do it. And in your category, it just seems like, you know, perfect because everyone's seeking immunity and, and uh, building their own, you know, personal health. And so just right at the right time, I guess. But the new new product introduction outside of the category, that's... Yeah, that's we're super excited. I mean, at our core, we're an herbal wellness company yeah. and we just kind of happen to make tea. But the, the, the herbs and the, the amazing formulators, um, they can formulate a lozenge just as well as a tea. So we're really excited about expanding outside the tea category. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to just shift gears a little bit, Blair. Talk a little bit about the short, uh, sort of short-term, long-term future. What does it look like for traditional going forward here, sort of post-pandemic? And then uh, just the next 50 years, I guess. What, what are you guys thinking about? <laughs> We're thinking big. So we're, we're thinking that we're gonna be a very large botanical wellness company. We envision that traditional medicinals can be on the par of a, of a trusted company like a Pfizer of herbal medicine. That's our North Star. And we're gonna do it in a social business model. So we have a stakeholder model. So that means we take into account all our stakeholders. We're a B Corp. And uh, we what I'm most excited about personally is the ability to do what we're doing at scale. That's, we wanna show the world that it's not just a little two or $3 million company that's doing these, this do-gooder kind of company. We wanna be sitting right next to Lipton. We wanna be a $500 million company with a social business model that's independent and show people that you can do it and that it's a competitive advantage to be mission-driven and values-oriented that it's not just charity that you invest in your supply chain, that it's actually a competitive advantage, that you can get a better quality herb, that you can have better relationships, that you can attract higher quality workers. I mean, our workers love this, what we're doing. When they come to work, they give us like 110% of what, they're, what, they're, what they can give every day. And, and I, I actually, I, 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 I spent a lot of time talking to investors over the years, trying to explain to them that that, that 20%, literally 20% of our EBITDA that we invest in our communities is actually makes us a more profitable company, not a less profitable company. And that gives us a stronger competitive advantage over the long term. And that this is the future of business. Business created climate change, it created income and racial inequality, and business is the solution to fix it. And we want to show people that you can do it. And we've been doing it in the natural foods industry. We want to show people that you can do it at scale, that we can be right next to Lipton in 70,000 stores in the United States, and we can go toe to toe with them. Nice. And that and is the business change we need, right? And I mean, you're carrying on a lot of what John Mackey was talking about with he did, conscious he did capitalism talk. last yeah. week. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt, Bill. No, no, no. I tell people all the time, run your company so well 
that you never have to sell it. And if you do, everyone will want to buy it. And then if you do sell it, it's going to be because you wanted to sell it, not because you had to and not because the investors made you. And, I, and, and I've seen a lot of Drake's friends in the industry who are wonderful people and they made a lot of money. Uh, but boy, they look at Drake at 74 with the company running really well, more profitable than ever. He's making he he, he can he can make a nice living from it and looking at it going, boy, I wouldn't mind still having my company. This is pretty neat what you're doing. So that's really interesting. So wow. On that point, there are people on this call that that are looking to this model and saying, you know, um, you know, maybe I should rethink, you know, maybe I, I have the wrong idea here. I grow to a certain size and then I sell or I I give up half of my ownership to to a larger brand. It, it's just such an interesting approach you guys have. And I think it's somewhat unique. I really do in the industry. Listen, people like Mark Retzloff and, and Doug Green and Michael Funk, I mean, they, they handed us this industry on a silver platter. No one ever got into this industry for the money, ever. Can you imagine doing this stuff in the 70s and 80s? There was no money and no investors, no consumers, no nothing except yeah. principles, you know, and, and so... I feel like sometimes our industry is turning into an incubator for big CPG. And that is just not what we are. We are our own ecosystem. We're our own unique identity. And I want us to be our own industry. That's what I love about the natural network. I think it's the, one of the best ways that we can help each other and, and create companies that last. And what we, we shouldn't be selling our companies. We should be growing them. Maybe we're going to merge them, put them in some holding companies. Uh, maybe Haynes is going to be a company that really has more values one day. And that's going to be a home for people. Right. And, uh, and, 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 and Hain is doing some nice stuff in that regard. And we, we need places like that where there's homes for companies where their mission and their values cannot be gutted, but be enhanced yeah. because we are no, we are the food industry. We're not some subset of it. We are, look what's happened during COVID. All of us are exploding. People are running to the store, health, wellness, quality, flights to quality. Like this is our industry. Like, don't give it away. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got a couple of comments in the in the chat room. Uh, first of all, your message is really resonating with people. Um, love that perspective. You know, great to hear this conversation. Um, good, good. You know, good conversation. People want to know where the hemp tea they can find the hemp tea. Um, Greg Bagney says, "Way to go, Blair. Great story. Great energy. Great products." But we also have a question. I want to a lot of it at you about packaging and. It's a big challenge, I know. Um, any thoughts on how the packaging can live up to the sustainability efforts of the products inside? This is from Carrie, um, sure. uh, one of our listeners today. Yeah, so one of the so we we have we are the first company, I think, in the tea industry, at least, and one of the first companies in natural foods to use 100% recycled paper. So we've been doing that for a long, long time. The thing that's been really challenging for us, the only thing that's been, and we have organic cotton string and we have organic paper in our tea tag. The thing that's been challenged for us is the overwrap. And the reason it's challenging for us is because we can't we can't do what Celestial does where they wrap it all up in that little foil or the, the, the wax paper because we are we are a medicinal grade tea. It's got to be sealed in all corners. It's got to be completely airtight for it to maintain its efficacy. And so um, we, we, we are continually working on coming up with a compostable overwrap. And we've got trials going on right now and we're excited about it, but it's probably some time away. But that's, that's our only real black eye, I think, around. And anybody who's doing a medicinal tea, is, it's, it, efficacy is number one for us. So, Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. That was a great answer. And thanks for working on that. Uh, I know there are some people in the Naturally Network uh, arena that probably are spending a lot of time on packaging issues, too. So I'm guessing yeah. there's some help out there for us. But um, Steve, any, any, uh, anything coming from your side there? Yeah. Um, you know, Blair, I think that uh, the, the bigger issue facing us, you know, we seem to be coming, hopefully emerging from the pandemic, uh, getting our economy back. Um, do you see that you may be um, seeing a surge on the horizon yet still or more of a leveling of the demand on your product going forward? I think everybody selling every consumer product is trying to figure out what the next year looks like. This is, you know, our sales manager has been, been uh, Kellogg's and Procter and Gamble, a bunch of big companies. And he's like, this is the first time in my career. I, I, I'm really struggling to see what 22 and 23 looks like. I think it's really hard, Steve. I think it's, you know, we're going to have like for us, we, we have a big business around cold and flu. So, Hey, I, I'm really happy nobody got the flu this year, but it sucks for our business. 
it's hot. <laughs> we a third of our business is cold and flu season. There's been like no flu season. There's literally hospitals Ooh. in the United States that have reported zero cases of the flu this year. Ooh. It's a what 25 were people year turning low. to. I'm curious what people but were. But I mean, there nobody's getting sick, mass and social distancing stuff. Yeah. Flu, you know, so. Yeah, but you know, still, I think they're they're looking at heightening immunity, uh, optimizing health. Did you notice any trends in your product line that you saw consumers responding to over the past year? Yeah, so it's interesting. We uh, we uh, this time last year, you know, COVID's a year old, so you know, we're a couple of three months into it. We were really gearing up for just a massive cold and flu season. Like we got to be ready with all our immune products. And, and although those did sell well and people stocked up on them, particularly in the first six months of COVID, interesting, what's really, what we, we, we've seen that surprised us is that what's sold the most over COVID has been stress relief and sleep mm. and digestion. And the, the, that, that people are stressed out. That's more so than they're getting sick, they're stressed out. So wow, we're, they're getting agita for the stomach. <laughs> yeah, we are selling more chamomile tea than we've ever, ever imagined we could sell. We're selling wow. more uh, lemon balm than we ever thought we could sell. And those were not the things, you know, with soothing the, the, uh, we, we, did, we got that wrong. Yeah, we, we really got anxiety, that anxiety, stress. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned something earlier. Um, if you, you said if you're the 12th tea company, it's hard to get a meeting. Okay, so, you know, kind of tying in with this whole naturally network of mentoring emerging brands and entrepreneurs and new innovation and business, how does that 12th T company look at the market right now? Find, well, find I mean, a way on the show. Overall, it's, it's not a great time to launch a new company, unfortunately. You know, I think you can't, there's only so much you can do about that. But I think where everybody, I think what I would do and what people are doing is they're going online. And they're building the business online. And when things settle back down, you can go to Safeway and you can go to Publix and make a call or you can go to Whole Foods, then they'll get the retail distribution. And that's, a, that's the beautiful thing that's going on now is you can build a pretty nice business online to get started. That's good. I think, I, I think we're noticing that too, that people come out with a different approach. You know, they, they, their direct to consumer um, attitude has shifted significantly. So they're doing a lot more D to, D to C and they, and they are using the online portals, uh, Shopify and, and Amazon. Um, but people are still buying products at retail. They're just getting picked up at the curb, it seems these days. So I think right. you're still seeing a pretty strong retail sale on your side of the equation. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, just, and it depends on what product. We have a very lightweight, long shelf life product. So we're going to sell a lot more online than Amy's is going to sell frozen pizzas online. That's just kind of the way that goes. You know, they're, 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 they're probably doing better at grocery and we're probably doing better online. It's kind of um, you know, Blair, the, 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 one of the things hmm. I think it's really fascinating about your trajectory and your career is that you you're working for a legacy founder, a legacy brand in the industry as a CEO. Do you have any advice for some of the people on, on the call today or that might listen later on for managing that career trajectory if they're not a founder, but they're sort of, you know, like they have these conscious business approaches and they want to work for a company. Any advice for how they can sort of keep directing that career in the right direction? I, I think you got to figure out this. The older I get, the simpler I think life gets and the more self-fulfilling life gets. You got to figure out who you are and you got to figure out what you really care about. And then you got to align your career with what you really care about. And I think that's really simple kind of advice. And, uh, and a lot of it's self-fulfilling too. Like if you, if you listen, people get stuck in life and they, they look at their options and they don't like them. Well, if you don't make any moves, then those are your options. But if you take a step forward and you get into a natural products company, or you get into a, a company that's making a product that you believe in a category you believe in, then all these new options open up that you never saw before. So my advice is kind of simple. Just keep taking steps toward what you feel in your heart and align it with what's in your head. And you'll see amazing things happen. I know that sounds really simple and maybe even a little bit trite, but listen, I can tell you at my age, way leads to way. Just keep, keep stepping towards your dreams. Keep stepping towards things you care about and all these options will open up for you. And never underestimate the ability to take any ordinary job in any company and make it extraordinary. Come in there, put your hand up. I'll try that. I'll do that. I'll find the right company. I tell young kids all the time, don't find the right job, find the right company. I mean, we have people every single year, somebody at our front desk reception 
uh, moves into like a job in logistics or moves into a job in management. Or It's amazing, you know, just because they, we, they, they got in the door, we saw their skills, would find a home for them. So, you know, and if your company doesn't recognize your talents and see what you have to offer, then you need to take those talents somewhere else. And that's the self-fulfilling part. You know, if you're at the right company, um, they're going to recognize that and that passion. And, and uh, I'm just, hey, you guys, I am a, I am a freaking overachieving B student. I talked to one of my friends from high school the other day. I was like, how the hell did I get to be a CEO? And it was, but he said a great thing to me. He said, you know, Blair, all I remember about you in high school is you were fearless. You wow. were just fearless. You maybe you weren't the smartest guy, but you were fearless. And I think the only difference between, like I always tell people like, don't be, don't listen to this today and be inspired to be like me. Listen to this today and be inspired to be like you. Who are you? Yeah. Be inspired to be who's inside of you. And then, and then try to try to make the very most of that. But um, I, I just, I just, the only difference between me being here and, and being a CEO and, and not is the courage to act, the courage to leave Nestle and go work for a vegetarian food company and roll up my sleeves and, and tried to do a bunch of stuff I never tried before. And just, just have the courage to believe in yourself. It's the one thing you're best at, right? Being yourself. So have the courage to be yourself and you'll see amazing things happen. Amazing things. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think the, va the I, value I, I'm of just, just... I'm, a, I'm the epitome of an overachieving person. I mean, it's because I, I found my passion. And, and don't get in the way of my passion. I'll beat you with that every day of the week. <laughs> it was good. It was someone just wrote the chat room. That was a lovely rant. I wouldn't call it a rant, but I thought, I thought it was great the way you, you know, like it's inspirational, you know, find the company, you know, uh, follow your passion. I mean, I think that that's really true. Um, Steve, and we're just don't we're be afraid. To... 10 o'clock, Steve. And, yeah. And don't be afraid <laughs> to start somewhere to learn the business because yeah, from exactly. what I hear from you is, and what I've valued is you can see there's a thread. If you try different things, you will end up learning different aspects of the business that contribute to the whole of your career. So, you know, I may not have wanted to do sales for my career, but having done a stint in natural product sales taught me a lot that has lasted long term and how we serve clients. So there is a thread through it all if you kind of trust that and trust yeah. who you are. Hey. So I really, I loved what you said, Blair. Listen, also I want to offer up, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, anybody out there, you, you find me on LinkedIn, send me a note. I respond to every single person that contacts me. And uh, I got all the time in the world to help you line up okay. your heart and your head if I can do that in any way. Well, M Mike Fata, the founder of Manitoba Harvest, and I want to get our hands on some samples of that hemp tea. So I'm going to follow <laughs> up with you on it. He mentioned right. it in the chat board. So yeah, yeah. But I would say just, you know, hearing you talk about like managing that fearlessness, um, you know, it's also nice to find really good mentors and really good uh, positive voices in the industry. And I would say you, you are definitely one of those, man. Definitely. I, I literally mentor 200 people a year. I, 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 I take I take two to four calls every single week. I Listen, wow. I drive to work and back every day. There's nothing more important to me that on the radio than or on a podcast maybe except your podcast, then talking to somebody about their career. So uh, take, and, and I tell you, life is self-fulfilling. The people who won't give you advice in life, you don't want their advice. And the people who will take it, it will take time and mentor you. Those are the people you want to be mentored by. Really, really good. Really, really great. Well, Steve, I, I don't know how else we can end it on a better note. Do you have any, any follow-ups for Blair at this point? No, I'm very, very grateful for your support you. and for being on the show. And just, uh, you know, for being a colleague and a friend out there in our hey, community. Thanks. Thanks, thank guys. you, Blair. And just, I just can't thank Drake Sadler and Traditional Medicinals and our board enough yeah. for this opportunity they gave me to, my voice is only as loud as people, people like you uh, enable it to be. So I thank you too very much for, for caring to hear what I have to say today. And if Drake doesn't get a chance to see this, please send him my sincere we'll regards. Okay. You guys are awesome. Take care. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you for joining us on Compass Coffee Talk. Our next episode is going to feature uh, Ryan Pintado Vertner and Carlotta Mast, and they're going to talk about the Jedi Collaborative, and that's on April 14, I believe. So we'll be sending you some information on that, and uh, we're very happy to stay in touch through Compass Coffee Talk. Thank you again. Have a great day. Bye Thanks. now. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.